Jesus. We worship you. We glorify yes, you. Lord. We magnify you. Thank yes. you, Father. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So grateful and thankful that you can join us tonight. I'm glad that you can be with us here at Covenant Fusion Church Wednesday night Bible study. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And where we together gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ, it's always a blessing. We'd love to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407 490 4019. We'd love to pray for you. Where it says, with two or more gather in his name, he is in the midst of us. Amen. So please text your prayer request to 407 490 4019. And we're going to declare Psalm 91. We'll continue declaring this scripture because there's power in his word. And we believe it and we will receive it and continue declaring it. So let's declare it now. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the stare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall to your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. But he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's yes. welcome Pastor Sri, who is going to bless us with the Bible study tonight. Pastor Sri. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, for God is good. Amen? Amen. I am always happy to have God in our conversation, God in our uh, life, God in our uh, um, everything that happens in our life. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm always very excited about that because uh, I know God is doing what God can do in our lives, no one else can do. Amen? Right. Amen. Um, I, I still remember one time, uh, one of my relatives <clears throat> made a comment like this, like, don't bother God with your small things. He has so many big things to care for. Um, and I think many people uh, have some uh, ideology uh, like that, that... Uh, Somehow God is bothered by us. Mm -hmm. He's too busy. Or uh, he is too big that he can't be uh, waiting on us. Or yes. he can't be doing those things. Mm -hmm. right. Oftentimes um, our God relation is humanized. Uh, we can't put God in that human equation or human limitations. Amen. That's true. If we put him in that limitation or in that corner, we ourselves are doing disservice to ourselves. Because what he can be in our lives, we are not fully taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. We are limiting him to our perception or our idea or our interpretation of God. So because of that, we always end up having uh, what, what we can name it as a sh short change of God. Instead of having his uh, outstretched arm, what we have is his short hand. Mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, remember he makes a statement, uh, 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 is not the Lord's arm long enough to pull you out? You know, he, he, he has that... Uh, that capacity and that capability 
the problem with that, why we encounter such a problem is that because he made himself so accessible to us. Have you ever been through that familiarity kills the enthusiasm? And we get too familiar with some things, we, our enthusiasm is, is declining. Um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons uh, uh, having a, a, a relationship uh, with uh, people that you are planning to get married, uh, having an intimate relationship with them is not a good practice. Amen. It's not a good practice because you become too familiar. Once, there is, once it becomes too familiar, there is no interest, there is no enthusiasm. You know, so that's why uh, it's important to understand um, how to put God where He belongs. Instead of trying to bring God to what you want Him to be. Or what is your interpretation of God? What is your understanding of God? You know, um, the big thing that Jesus does to us when He first preaches to us saying, For the kingdom of God is at hand, now repent. Um, what he was introducing to us is now you have to come to a place that is not where you are. Mm -hmm. you know, repent would be change of mind, right? Mm -hmm. Change of thinking. You know, if all is well with us, why would he ask us to change our thinking? If he doesn't want you to be changing or if he doesn't want you to be approaching him or pushing yourself to to go near him. Remember the instruction God says is, <clears throat> he doesn't say, I will draw near you, then you, draw, then you can draw near me. He doesn't say that. Instead he says, draw near me, then I will draw near you. Mm -hmm. And all those, uh, even the scripture says, seek and you will find. But our mindset is always in the backwards. Let me find, then I probably I will seek. What is there to seek once you found? <laughs> what is there for you to pray once you have the answer? What is there for you to explore once you know everything? What is there for you to use your faith when you already have it? <clears throat> So um, we have to push ourselves to how God wants us to operate or how He is operating instead of us trying to put Him in our box, Amen. in our corner, in our small little petty thinking. So um, that is one of the challenges I believe we should have as, uh, as a goal for us, that how much I can reach out to Him. Amen. We all know we can't reach out completely to Him because He is eternity. But nevertheless, our pursuit should be reaching out. Yes. Yes. If we don't reach out to that, if we don't have the pursuit, we will never grow. Mm -hmm. That's why most of the Christians and most of the church <coughs> doesn't plan to grow. They just want things to go the way they are. Let me just, you know, let me let, let them let them go. Let them just work. Mm. They don't want any turbulence. They don't want any uh, discomfort. They don't want any challenge. They don't, they don't want any inspiration. They're fine where they are. Mm -hmm. You know who else is fine where they are? Devil. Dead people. <laughs> <laughs> They're absolutely fine where they are. If you are trying to be fine with where you are, let me tell you something. You might be a dead person. Oh, the walking dead. <laughs> because if you all uh, look at it, most of the times these days, the church is becoming a cemetery. It maintains dead people. Yep. Instead of trying to resurrect the dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to breathe life into the lifeless. Amen. Isn't that what God did when God created Adam? The commission he gave, breathe life. 
Call them by their name. What is it? Breathing life. Whatever God did to Adam, Adam is doing it to the creation. Breathe life where there is no life. We are given that mission to breathe life wherever we go. Wherever we are uh, uh, taking our feet, wherever we are taking our presence, wherever we are taking our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Won't that be a good antidote for depression? Yes. When your thoughts is taking you to death, you want your thoughts to take you to life. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. That's why God says rejoice. While he is addressing anxiety, he says rejoice. Yep. Mm -hmm. rejoice. Again I say rejoice. <coughs> While he is giving the instruction saying, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. So if you want uh, 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 some sort of a reverse of course in your life when your mindset is, uh, when your mind is driving you to a corner, which unfortunately we all go through that. Many times we go through that. We are cornered by our own thoughts. True. Yeah. We are boxed by our own thoughts. And that's the place where we ought to challenge ourselves to do it God's way. So the, my, 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 my pursuit in this Bible study, which is Lamentations, Lamentations, Inner Cry, inner cry, um, we are so much becoming like world, the church, as a church we are becoming more like world, where we try to deal with the outside stuff and not the inside stuff. Sure. Mm. We are more interested in dealing with somebody that is uh, uh, lacking food than we are interested in trying to deal with somebody that is lacking mental strength. Amen. Amen. You know, unfortunately, there are a lot of these uh, 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 nations uh, uh, that are in kind of like a, uh, a Scandinavian nations or stuff like that, those the countries. They declare themselves as Down syndrome free. <laughs> what? They declare their nations as Down syndrome free. You know what? They abort everybody that is identified as a Down syndrome kid. Oh, okay. I'm going to let you chew on it. Wow. Because what we are trying to declare as a victory lap could be something that we ignored an inner cry. Mm -hmm. We try to mask our inner cry with a victory lap. We don't know how to deal with our inner cry, hence we come up with a masking method. Yes. Hence we come up with a substitution. We come up with things that tries to replace it. They can say, hey, we don't have Down syndrome. At what price? Right. What are they paying for it? How are they attracting the devil's altar into their lives? What is the next thing? Oh, you, you, you lived more than 60 years, let me kill you. Wow. You're too much of a burden. Oh my gosh. That's you know social security can handle you, right? So let wow. me put you to the ease. Uh. That's, this is how the world deals with problems. That's sad. Unfortunately, the church is doing the same thing. We should be the light. We should be somebody who gives answers. True. Well, instead of giving answers, what are we doing? We are shouting loud. Screaming. And last time I checked, when we scream, nobody listens. We're too busy screaming rather than giving answers. And that is one sect in the church. And the other sect is like, okay, um, I, I, uh, that is not a thing that we have to deal with. Because they are too occupied with, uh, 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 with the physical needs, trying to meet the physical needs, that they ignore that there is a whole lot of things that we have to deal with internally. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, 
Let me be very, uh, uh, let me be very careful when I make this statement. God cares for your uh, your mental health more than more, mental health more than your physical food. Mm -hmm. I can prove that in many places in the Bible. When God selected uh, 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 David, he was looking at inside, not outside. Mm. <coughs> he wasn't looking at anything as an outside thing, as a qualification, as a qualifier. He was looking at the inner, inner things. So that's why it is important for us to understand our inner strengths. When we don't ca capture how strong is your inner self, how you can utilize your inner self to make a difference. You could be, you know, I have seen many people that are physically strong and they don't have an ounce of strength mentally. I have seen way too many of them. And let me be very honest, the church is full of them. They're more interested in doing yoga, Pilates, exercise, gyms, and all that than them doing what is required of God. Amen. Preach. <coughs> That's why the Bible says bodily exercise profited little. Don't try to quote me because you want to skip exercise. That's not where I'm going. I want us to understand the fact that you have an inner strength that has been given to you. The God is trying to use that. Mm. How many of you want to be used by God? Amen. Amen. Right here. As much as you want to be used by God, if you are not equipped, you know He can use, right? right. You have to be equipped. Right. When we are not equipped, we can't be used. When there is no proper equipment, I can tell, you know, Pastor Warren is into construction. Anytime that he is doing certain things, he has to have a certain equipment. If there is no such equipment, he can do the task he wants to do. Mm -hmm. He has the desire to do it. He has a place to work it. But the equipment is not there. Even if he has wrong equipment to do this job, what will he do? <clears throat> that's, it. that's the same problem I believe God is experiencing with us because we are not willing to get equipped. Mm -hmm. We are not willing to let God equip us. Let him do that thing yes. that he, we may be equipped for what he uh, <coughs> wants to do in and through us. So this Lamentations is for me is a response of an equipped heart or a response of an equipped inner cry. It is something that is coming from inside yet it is coming because it is equipped to cry. Mm -hmm. Cry is, the Bible talks about it, uh, talks about cry in many places. And God considers your cry to be very valuable. So last time I checked, if it is something of a value, you got to have rarity. Right? So that's why we have to understand the difference of abusing tears versus using tears. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to use this instead of abusing it? The sign of uh, um, uh, reactions many times for people, their own immediate reaction for anything is cry. And then there are some people who don't even want to cry. True. I believe both of them are wrong. Because the Bible talks about balance. God has given all these things for us to be equipped. Now Jesus, when he was uh, carrying the cross and he's getting ready to go um, be put on the cross, I'm not here to talk about a victory dance, but I'm asking here to give me your attention to understand our responsibility. I want us to be responsible in what God has called us to be. 
If I was to come and preach to you, God is getting ready to pour out a blessing into your life. Everybody, every one of us will get cheered up and excited about it. But, but here God is saying, oh, let me equip you so you may be responsible. Let me get you to a place where your, your things can bring results. How many of you want to see America being saved? Yes. Amen. How many of you want to see your city being saved? Amen. You know, we want all those things happen. It ain't going to happen without responsibility. Without responsibility, you cannot have it. Many times we are so excited about the authority, forgetting the fact your authority is useless without your responsibility. Then there used to be, uh, uh, um, when I was in college, there used to be these uh, lecturers uh, that I was friends with. And I would take them to the bars and sit next to them and they would do anything and everything with me and all those kinds of things. So now when the authority time have come, they can't tell me a thing. <laughs> They're even scared to talk to me. Why? Because they have never been responsible. Yeah. Had they been responsible, their authority would have worked in my life. I think this is what is happening for the church. We are trying to fit into the world too much that we are forgetting our responsibility. As a church, we have a responsibility that the Bible talks about us saying as a peculiar generation. That means there is a different responsibility that God is giving you and me. That if we are not fulfilling our responsibility, then when the time comes to use your authority, it's not going to fly. So Jesus gives this instruction which we read last uh, week, Luke 23, 28. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your, for your children. Lament or cry not for me. So you should give us a distinction. He is asking us to cry. But not for the wrong things. He doesn't even want us to cry for him. Right. Imagine that. The ultimate sufferer. The person. There is nobody who has suffered more than him. Amen. 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 Even in that suffering he says don't cry for me. That should teach us something. Your cry should not be towards suffering. When you suffer, you cry. But that is not how we should be crying. We always cry for the suffered wrong. Yeah. But he gives an instruction here, daughters of Jerusalem, cry for yourself and your children. Neither one of them have suffered any wrong. But he is preparing them ahead. How to prepare themselves for what is to come. This is a cry of a prophet. Jesus was inviting them to be in that prophetic cry. If you look at the uh, 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 Bible in the in what we call as the prophets of propheticals, the the uh, um, famous prophets and the non-famous or the big prophets and the small prophets they have all these distinctions in theology but theological studies I mean uh, if you look at them most of their life is about crying mm -hmm. most of those prophets is about crying they cry because they are seeing something that is happening now and they are seeing something that is to happen tomorrow had they not cried, Israel should have, would have never seen any redemption. They could have been annihilated. 
Mind you, how many attempts have made made, made to annihilate Jews? Mm -hmm. Hitler is not the only one that tried it. Even though some people, hey, I, I don't want to go there. <laughs> All right. Um, he gives the instruction, daughters of, Jer daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. There is an inner cry that God is trying to challenge us. Jesus is trying to challenge us to. That is a responsibility. You know you're responsible to cry. Think about that. You're responsible to cry. Now as much as God, Jesus said when he said, Oh, be of good cheer. It's the same Jesus who is saying cry. As much as we want to be that happy selves, He's also saying, be, the, be my weepers. But we are not crying for the suffering. Instead, we are crying with a purpose. Are you with me here? There is something that we, we need to understand, the value of our cry. And the direction where our cry ought to go. Um... Today I'd like for us to start the first chapter of uh, Lamentations. I'm not sure how far I will go today, but I will start it. Lamentations chapter 1. How lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a widow is she who was great among the nations. The princess among the provinces has become a slave. If you have not uh, gotten it by now, he's talking about Jerusalem. Remember what was Jesus Christ was talking about? Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. What is Jerusalem? His dwelling place, right? His dwelling place. That means he's calling us to cry for his dwelling place. So as we are going through this thing, I want us to um, have a mindset to, to uh, um, have a reflection. As we are studying this uh, Lamentations, I want us to have an individual reflection. Personal for me. What is it for me? Where am I in this? While we are doing that, also have a community or a race reflection. Now I'm not here to uh, 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 define races by what the society is defining based on the color. Mm -hmm. That's not what I am after. <clears throat> but the group, I call, I call, I for me, my, my, I, I, I look at it from my understanding. A group, a group of people, a group of people that used to be this, now they, they, they have become this. My family used to put God first, now they don't. I'm looking at that community or that race. My, 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 uh, 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 my group of people, all this group of people, we used to be able to put God first. Now we are not doing that. Mm -hmm. That could define as a church. Your church could be, your church group could be your race. Because that is your community. Mm. Now, while we are doing this, also do a reflection, a city reflection. What would this city used to represent? And what is your city representing today? There is nowhere no mayor is promoting the cross. But every mayor is trying to promote LGBTQ rights. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you with me here? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what happened to my city? Right. Mm -hmm. And then let that come bring us also to a place of a nation reflection. As we study through this thing. What happened to my nation? How was this nation built? 
How was this nation formed? And what is the state of my nation now? As we are pondering through this uh, Bible study, I encourage every one of us have this, an individual reflection. Mm. Mm. Let us have an individual reflection. Let it read us. Where am I? Mm -hmm. <coughs> have I become that Jerusalem that has become desolate? That he cannot dwell? Am I in that state anywhere? Or what happened to my community? What happened to my race? Are we putting God first? Where am I? Have, I? have I fallen as a race? Have I fallen as a community? You know, I grew up in a place where, where if your uh, my, my uncle saw me doing something wrong, he would slap me. <laughs> he didn't have to wait for my, my dad yeah. to come. We never just feared our father and mother. There is a, there is a ton of people out there. <laughs> because they are, they are, it's a community. It's a race. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember the saying, it says it takes a village? It takes a village. Yeah. Yep. And unfortunately, our village now is becoming government. <laughs> Last time I checked, I never saw government fix problems. Mm -hmm. That's right. Whether we know this or not, right now, the debt that we have mm. in this nation, think about that. Crazy numbers. Mm. Yep. We probably don't even know how many zeros are there, that much of debt we have. That's right. Anytime we know very well, we know darn well that as a house, when we are running our home uh, budget, we know we can't spend more than what we are bringing in. Why do they lose the common sense when they go up there? Yeah, exactly. Like, come on, preach. Yes. Then we have to reflect a, a city reflection. What is my city represent? What does my city represent? Is it representing the fallen state of man? Or is it representing the resurrected state of God. Why I'm asking for that reflection is that should bring us to a point of crying. Because this is not going to happen through our complaining. Let me be very honest. Our complaining is not going to bring the results but our cry will. Our weeping will. Our lamentation will. Because Jesus gave us the instruction to do so. Cry for them. He won't ask, He will never ask you to do something that he is not going to respond to. Amen. Amen. If he is asking us to weep for our children, for ourselves and our children, that means he's going to respond for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Last but not the least one is a nation reflection. Where is our nation? Where is the nation I'm dwelling in? Is it honoring God? Or have we left it? Again, the answer for it is not in your complaining. But it is in your weeping. While we are traveling through this uh, uh, weeping, I want us to understand certain things in an individual perspective also. I want to address some things. Like right now, in this uh, cry, um, if you if you look at it uh, when when uh, uh, in the book of Lamentation, the history is that this book um, they say they they don't know who wrote this book of Lamentations. Some people attribute it to Jeremiah because it kind of fits his pattern of writing, but uh, some people like okay we we truly don't know who wrote it. But we all know who, uh, the, who the person might be or might not be, but we all know the Holy Spirit who is behind it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, <clears throat> that's one, of the, one other thing I want us to observe when you are studying um, Psalms, the book of Psalms. As much as we look at Psalms as a rejoicing things, but it doesn't, it doesn't start like that. No. Most of the Psalms starts with a the, with the sorrow, with a suffering, with a cry. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Where is the praise in it? So 
So he says, how lonely is this the city that was full of people? This I want us to read individually Some for a moment. I want us to have an individual uh, reflection of this. Because uh, loneliness is one of the biggest struggles right now in our society. In our society, there are people yes. that struggle with loneliness. Yes. Physically lonely, mentally lonely. Yes. Most of the times they are, uh, they are lonely because they don't have a spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. Spiritual connection also. But at the same time, we have come to a place where we isolate ourselves. This is, this is a, 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 a challenge that mankind is facing. Us as human beings, we are facing this thing so badly that, that if we uh, um, carefully observe what is happening in our society right now, everybody is with everybody, but nobody is with everybody. <laughs> nobody is with anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I my brother's keeper? That have become our slogan. Yeah. Whatever he, she, he, she is dealing with, that's their problem. Because I have my own problems. <laughs> yeah. I have my own struggles. Maybe that, that is why Jesus instituted a, 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 a system where he says confess to each other. Confess to each other. When was the last time we did it as an on purpose thing? Mentally I am struggling. This has become a big... Uh, a uh, 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 requirement for us in our marriage between me and my wife. Anytime we are struggling with something, whether it is a temptation or whether it is a state of mind or whether it is something with the body, we come forth and confess to each other immediately. Because we don't want it to stay under because it's going to destroy me. It's going to destroy me. If I share it with my wife 90% of the time, I get a refresher from it. Because she finds a thing that could refresh me. That could help me navigate that. Or I do the same thing for her. There are times she wouldn't even, uh, she wouldn't even uh, confess to me. I'm like, what's wrong with you? After a minute of thinking and pondering all around, denying there is nothing wrong with me. <laughs> she, it's a woman thing, isn't it? Yep. They can't admit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but after that, she comes to a place where she says, I think this is on my, on my mind. And she confesses. When she confesses, whatever God brings us, whatever God gives us, we bring it. And there we are able to have a freedom. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of isolation. Yeah. Remember, God said, they, them both shall become one. Mm -hmm. They both shall become one. Unfortunately, many marriages don't offer this. No. This is one of those things that we need to strive for. If this is not a pursuit, I, I'm, anybody that is trying to get married, if this is not your pursuit, don't get married. Because mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. it's going to cause more struggles for you. What good it is when, when, when your husband or your wife is not able to talk to you in a personal level. That's what I call is you have to be a spouse that can allow your spouse to be naked. Not just physically, but mentally. A guy is very insecure when it comes to his wife. He doesn't want to indulge any secrets. You know why? Because the wife is going to talk to her, her mother before he talks to him. Before he can be there for him. Let me be very clear. As a guy, I tell you this secret. For a guy to open up is really tough. He'd rather bury it than open up. Because even if you think of that as, a, oh, look at that, that's a small struggle. Are you crying about that? He can't take it. He can't take it. 
And we do that many times, even to our children. Why are you crying about these small things? While we are inspiring them to get out of that small petty things, we have to come to a place of relation where we can relate with them in such a way where we can encourage them to get out. That is the support system God has created for us. That is the support system God wants us to have in our lives. Where we can support each other. It's okay. It's okay if you have to wash your dirty laundry. Can I supply the soap? Are you with me here? This is the true church. When we miss this objective, we don't know how to weep. Lord, my sister is struggling here, Lord. Can you heal her? Lord, can you be with my sister? Can you be with my brother? He is struggling so much here. That's where the weeping comes. Mm -hmm. That's where our true weeping should be coming. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what happens is we are all stuck in something called guilt. And you know what guilt does? Guilt always leads to isolation. Guilt always leads you to isolation. But that's why the Bible time and again stands against guilt. How many people are today, they may not be, uh, how many people have opioid uh, uh, struggle these days? A lot. Right? Mm -hmm. I bet dollar to dollar here, 90% of that opioid crisis has guilt as a root cause. Probably. The inner self has not been resolved. Yeah. The inner thing has not been uh, healed. Mm -hmm. So they resolved to find their isolation. They find that isolation in drugs. Mm -hmm. They find their isolation in homelessness. They find their isolation in some sort of other addiction. Remember, most of these people, their addictions are their isolation. They just want to be in that bubble. They don't want to come out. They don't want to see themselves. They don't want nobody to see themselves. That's where they go. So that's why guilt always leads to isolation. Now Jerusalem is struggling with the same thing. It had the guilt. What happened to my nation? That's what the, the prophet was writing here in the Lamentation. What happened to my city? It used to be full of people. Now there is nobody. It went and became a slave. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we struggle today? Slavery? Mm -hmm. yeah. Our young children are slaves. That's a, that's a totally uh, 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 different and a big topic that f for you and me to explore. What are they getting enslaved to? <clears throat> and then, loneliness often is a result of rejection. Rejection from outside or inside. We are not equipped to handle rejection. Yeah. We don't like rejection. All we want is approval. Mm -hmm. In the process of that, we can't handle rejection. Many of us, I'll be very, very blunt and honest with you. Many of us are not ready for rejection. If someone was to give you a contrary opinion, you're not ready. You fight, you defend. You become so arrogant. Hence nobody wants to give you any correction. We became the self-righteous people that we don't want any correction. We can't take any correction. Right now, that is what the society is right now. I am wrong, my truth. <coughs> I don't care what the facts are. I don't care how God created. I don't care how this is. I don't care. What I say is what I say. Approve this. 
I prove this. Because we are looking for an approval. And the church is also doing the same thing. We are looking for an approval from the society. And hence, we are experiencing rejection. Yeah. Now there's a story that I, I grew up with. There was this guy uh, who is like a village uh, 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 washerman. Like he would wash the clothes of all the, that village. That's his job. That's his thing. He would go collect and bring all the clothes of all the people and wash them. And for him, the transportation that he has was a donkey. So he, he uses that for carrying all the clothes and once they are washed and all that, carry them back to these things. Um, and uh, another thing that this guy would always have is, is a, a dog, a watchdog. So one day, um, this guy finished his job and, and it is night and he's like, he's, you know, he's tired, dog tired, so he sleeps. So a thief comes to steal. He's, he's trying to steal it. Uh, the thief is trying to um, steal it, and then uh, the dog is seeing it, and the donkey is seeing it. And uh, the dog decides not to bark. So now the donkey says, no, uh, you know, uh, the donkey gets a little too excited. It's like, hey, dog, 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 don't you want to do your job? Don't you want to do your job? Come on, bark. You, you see the thief is stealing. Come on, bark, bark, bark. He says that. But the dog, for whatever reason, maybe it's a male dog, who knows. <laughs> it turns its face around and, <laughs> and I'm not doing this today, man. <laughs> and then the, the, the donkey decides, okay, let me take this responsibility on me and I will, I'm going to bark. <laughs> In its mind, it's thinking it's barking is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard a donkey cry? Mm -hmm. It's one of the most annoying sounds you will ever come across. <laughs> And for the donkey crying, the master wakes up. Guess what he does? He beats the life out of this donkey. Can't you not shut up? I'm sleeping. We have to understand our roles. We are more interested in what the other person is not doing than us doing what we are meant to. We are trying to fit into the bill there and ends up receiving more problems. When we are trying to confine ourselves to the society where we should be inspiring the society, where we should be uh, encouraging the society, where we should be the light for the society, instead what are we doing? We are trying to confine with them. Yeah. And because of that, the society is going dark anyway. It's going dark. You don't need to worry about it. The light is becoming dark. Hence, you are losing your flavor. <laughs> so here again, I'll, I'm going to repeat. The loneliness often is a result of rejection. No, that, that's a very important point for us to ponder on because rejection is not some, someone else rejecting you, you rejecting yourself too. Many times that is, that is one of the biggest struggles people face. Them rejecting themselves. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, people rejecting themselves. We can't, uh, uh, that is one of the reasons we resolve to isolation because we can't live with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, an honest question that you and me need to have is, can you live with yourself? You know the best test you can do? Just take one day off. Do nothing but sit for yourself. Figure out how much you like yourself or not. The answer for that is many times you don't like it. You identify yourself in what you do. Always you're trying to find yourself your identity in, in what you do, what you can do, what you can finish, what you can accomplish. That's true. Because that is our isolation. Mm. There might come a time where God will take that off from you. 
Can you live with it? That's why many people, a lot of the people that have worked all their life to death you know, while they are at work, and as soon as they retire, within six months they die. Because they can't live with themselves. They were always identified in the work they have done. What they are, their isolation. Because something that is driving them, many times people try to uh, uh, put that as a motivation is driving them. No, 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 rejection is driving them. Maybe we need to take a pause and ponder on our rejection. Are we okay with ourselves? The best doctor for you is you. Because you know you better than anybody. That's right. Can you sit with you? That's why many people struggle to sleep with themselves. Sleeping problems. Because they don't know how to live with themselves. When they don't know how to live with themselves, they don't know how to sleep with themselves. So there is a lot of it that is stemming from rejection. We got to figure out how we can cope with rejection. How we can overcome rejection. What is it, that rejection that I am looking at? What is it that is rejecting me? Is it outside rejection or is it inside rejection? Trust me, as a man, I have that struggle a lot. Really? A lot of struggle as a man for me. You know, uh, any time I took, I took a, a vacation when I was uh, at work, the first day I'll be all, all, all right. From starting from the second day, I feel guilty. Why am I not working? Am I not supposed to work? Because I, I, I put my identity in that work. That I can live happily and enjoy the life that I have in front of me. As a matter of fact, that vacation is something you earn. <coughs> my dad died uh, without even using vacation. He cashed his checks. <coughs> vacation time, he made a paycheck out of it. Got a good money. But for what? He never took off. <laughs> so that's why maybe we are working for an extra credit that doesn't exist. Maybe it should be a time that we can look into it. Because there has to be a cry coming from us that really sets the tone for us. That is going to set us totally free. The true freedom, remember, whom the sun sets free is? Free. We have to have the freedom. We should be okay with ourselves. You know, we should be, we should be telling ourselves, you know, how, how much it takes for, for someone of a caliber, like David's caliber, to tell himself, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, bless, the, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. <coughs> Nobody is encouraging him, he's encouraging himself. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Maybe that's why he was qualified by God as my friend. <coughs> man with my own heart. Man after my own heart. Not because he was perfect. He failed several times. He was a murderer. He was an adulterer. Yet God calls him, this is a man after my own heart. I think one of the big secrets in his life is he never gave room for guilt. He never gave room for rejection. Imagine the man, that man was plagued with rejection. The very son that he wanted to be the king is killed under his hand. The one son is sleeping with his own, own, own wives. Or concubines. Think about that sort of a rejection going through that. And in all that, he never lost his heart. He never lost his pursuit to go after God. And even to look at that, after all that he had done, he all he wanted was to build a temple for the Lord, and the Lord says no. 
Rejection coming from the Lord Himself. Imagine that. The magnitude of it. And the Lord is telling you no. You can't do that. You, you're not supposed to build it. Imagine that rejection. But I personally think that is his strength. He was able to cope well with rejection. Mm -hmm. He was able to sleep happily at the end of the day because he was connected with God. There is nothing isolated from him. The entrainer of the movement, Nathan, came to him and told him, Hey, you did this. What, do you, what does he do? He could have killed him. Nobody would know. But instead, he apologized publicly. <clears throat> so, uh, um, I want to read a couple more scriptures from Daniel, because it's very important. Daniel 6, chapter 10 verse. I want us to understand this. Daniel and uh, uh, Jeremiah and this weeping and everything goes together. There is a, a, a bigger uh, a connection that is here. Um, now when Daniel knew, this is Daniel 6 chapter 10 verse. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and he is in, in his upper room with his windows open toward what? Jerusalem. Okay? He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. This is the same time when, the, when Jerusalem was desolate. This is the same time Daniel was looking at Jerusalem because that is where the presence of God is. You know, when this guy was writing in the lamentation, how desolate are you, Jerusalem? But Daniel is looking at him, no, 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 that's where my Lord is. I'm going to do this thing every day. Amen. Are you with me here? Amen. So the same place where you are being rejected is the same place where you can find acceptance. It's the same place. Because what you are looking for acceptance might be to, from people, from things. <clears throat> Right. When you should be looking for it from God. Amen. He was actually risking his own life to do this. By this time there was a decree that you shouldn't even pray to other gods. Yet he was doing it. That's why he was thrown into the lion's den, isn't it? You got to see Daniel's life, the journey of it. How he started and how he traveled and how he becomes one of the most significant prophets in seeing the future. Not only the future of Jesus, but also the, fu uh, the future of Jesus as the Savior, but also Jesus as the King. He goes that far. This is why I'm trying to help, um, help us get into this travel of weeping. Why? Because your travel of weeping will take you places where you can't even dream of going. If you see, Daniel's story started with rejecting meat and wine as a slave. It starts there, and that's the same Daniel who is interpreting for us what is to come. Who is receiving from above what is to come. We, we have to observe his journey. How he was able to come to that place where he can see the heart of God. Where he can see things in him. He was traveling into his eternity. Think about that. Right. Into God's heart. And that is what I want us to have as an aspiration while we travel through these lamentations. That we will catch his heart. That we can travel farther. Because we are too stuck in the now. What about me? What about now? Mm -hmm. 
Daniel 9 chapter starting at verse 1. I'm just going to read this thing. So in the first year of uh, Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the lineage of Midis, who was made king over the realm of Chaldeans, uh, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the book, books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord, look, through Jeremiah the prophet. What was he doing? He was able to capture another prophet's spirit, And then he is taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. I really pray that it would psych you. That it would get you more excited than you getting a new house. <laughs> that is really my prayer. Because these things matter the most. If we can get into these things, all the other things will follow. Amen. That's why God, Jesus gave us the instruction, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things yeah. shall be added unto you. Amen. That is what it is. This is seeking the kingdom of God. Lamentation is for the seeking of the kingdom of God. The inner cry ought to be something that we look in God, not in our isolation. We are crying too much in our isolation, in our rejection. Maybe it is time that we go into the acceptance of the Lord and live in there. Um, there are many people that are forgiven spiritually, but they are not forgiven mentally. They know they are saved, yet they don't know they are saved. That's where real mental struggles come. Because <clears throat> the trans salvation has not transcended the realms. When you are saved, you are saved completely, not just in one place, right? Amen. That's what gives you the power to overcome any addiction. Because right. Right. you will be coming out of your isolation. Addictions are isolations. So he says, uh, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the books, the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, the prophet, uh, he is seeing the authenticity of God's word through a prophet's prophecy. That he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. He knows there is a desolation, yet he prays in, toward Jerusalem. When you look at the stories of Nehemiah, or, uh, look at the stories of Ezra, they know the desolation of Jerusalem. Yet their pursuit was to rebuild that. Their pursuit every single day was to rebuild Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. Amen. That ought to be our, our thing any day. Are we rebuilding this temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit? Are we rebuilding the community, my race? Are we rebuilding the city that we live in? Are we rebuilding the nation that we are in? Mm -hmm. Then I set my face, third verse, then I set my face toward the Lord to make request by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. Made confession. Mm -hmm. He didn't go take a sword. He didn't go wage a war. None of those things. He was making a confession. Look, what was he doing? Oh, Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. Now look at this. We have sinned and committed inequity. He was transcending his self. He wasn't saying it's their problem. That is the weeping I'm trying to go after. Amen. That is the lamentation I believe God is calling us for. When we can understand the weight of this lamentation, I believe we are going to bring an amazing freedom all around us. Not only us, but our race, our community, our city. Our nation. 
We want the nation to be free. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yet you are in bondage. How can that happen? <laughs> we want our city to be free. Yet we are in bondage. We want our race to be free. Yet we are in bondage. That's why I say let this be an individual reflection for us. Challenge yourself. Are we, am I okay with rejection? When somebody says no to you, how are you reacting? The best exercise you can say is, unless the Lord leads you or the Lord is telling you, don't defend yourself. Don't defend yourself. Jesus did the same thing. Because he knew he doesn't have time to defend. He was more focused on getting it done. Amen? Amen. So I pray that the Lord will give us the heart to go toward this lamentation. And I pray that you guys, uh, that we all will come more prepared and uh, uh, study on this thing. We are going to ponder more on this so we may understand how to deal with the rejection and how to walk into the approval. Amen. And not only as we walk into the approval, we will bring approval upon our race, upon our community, upon our, our city. You know, we don't want God to reject our city. We don't want, to God, we don't want God to reject our nation. <clears throat> don't forget, God did that with Sodom and Gomorrah. He rejected them. Remember, even before Sodom and Gomorrah, there was another rejection God did for the whole earth. No worse time. He rejected. Now he is giving us an opportunity to bring it back from rejection to approval. But he cannot do it without your approval. You dealing with you. We have to figure out how we can approve ourselves. How we can live up with ourselves. Even if you don't do anything. There may come a time. I'm just saying. There may come a time you are bedridden. You can't do what you are doing. <clears throat> Even then you got to live in the approval of God. Because God needs you even then. Even when you feel like you can't move. You are needed by God. Even when you are feeling like I am confined to this thing too much, you are needed by God. Many times I see people complaining about I couldn't do what I am doing, what I used to do. I really like to scream upon them and say, maybe you shouldn't be doing that now. Maybe God doesn't need you to be doing that. Maybe he needs you to be doing something else. Could you find that? Amen. 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 Lord, we pray that you would give us a clarity on this approval, my God. If there are any isolations in our lives, that we can, we are rejecting ourselves, or we are rejecting your grace, we are rejecting your manifestation in our lives, Father. We pray that you would forgive us. We need your approval to be working in our lives, Father. Personally, in our community, in our race, my God. In our cities, in our inner cities, in our nation. We pray, oh Father, may there not be any rejection around us. Help us be a better weepers, God. That we may lament for what you have called us. As you have given the commission to those women saying, daughters of Jerusalem, cry for yourselves. Do not cry for me, but cry for yourselves and your children. Ignite our hearts for that cry, Lord. That may we, we may weep for what is to come. That we may be prepared to see your restoration at work. Not the desolation, Father. Into your hands we submit ourselves. At this hour we even lift up the men and women of God 
that served this grandfather. Inside and outside, my God. The police, the firemen, the military, Father. I ask, we ask for a special protection upon them and their families. There's a lot of conflict, a lot of struggle that is going on. Especially when the leaders are doing the wrong things. They don't, their morale is being discouraged, my God. I pray that you would sweep their hearts with your comfort. With your encouragement. That they may see your light, your hope. Even while we are seeing desolation, Father, give us that heart where we can cry for hope. Cry for a future as you have planned and purpose, Father. <clears throat> Into your precious hands we submit. And we continue to declare America is saved. And your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, God bless. Thank you.